vector regression course. This is our machine learning project about home appliances energy consumption. Today, we are going to understand the interaction between different features and we are going to add more features into our dataset. Before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification icon, select all, like this video, and don't forget to share this with your friends. So, let's get right into our job. So, in our earlier lesson, we have actually identified the different features in our data set. And we have these ones. We have T1, RH1, T2, RH2, T3, RH3, and many more. So, with these features, our assumption is that, that each one of them is independent from each other. However, that can give us a lot of burden, especially when it comes to the selection of what features to be used later on. It's because we cannot just say, for example, take T1 alone, believing that our assumption is correct per se, that T1 is really independent from R H one Because the fact is that the temperature in the kitchen area and the humidity in the kitchen area play very important role in the consumption of our appliances that is used in the kitchen. So therefore, we can always say that T1 and RH1 have interaction. And we can never say that T1 is a constant and RH1 is also a constant. So with this, we have to show this kind of interaction in our modeling. And the same situation happens in all of these different features for T2, RH2, T3, and RH3, for example. So to show that kind of interaction, what we will do is that we're going to remove this kind of additive assumption. So for this one, we're going to have this one, remove additive assumption. So we won't get lost. And of course, you guys can really follow through what we're doing here. So we're going to have them one by one. So we will have TF. So to show this kind of interaction, what we do here is that we actually multiply the hour and the lights, the T3 and the RH3, the T2, RH2, and so on and so forth. So with this, we would be able to make the connection between these intertwined pairs of our features. And so this can minimize the assumption that each one is independent from each other. So let's execute this one. Okay, so it is now executed. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average energy load per weekday and per hour. This is actually very important because later on what we will do here is that with these assumptions already executed, we would be able to understand what would be the average of the energy consumption as far as the time elements of weekday and hour are concerned. So what we will do is we're going to do this one. So we're going to use this one to calculate the average energy load. So we're going to write here average, average energy load by week and by hour. So if we're going to use this one, the def code mean, we are actually here creating a unique categories of our features. Remember that we have here by hour and by week, and this will also return us the values which are means in real features. So let's execute this one. So we could proceed to our next step. After having this dictionary that would return us the unique categories of our features, what we will do next is that we're going to calculate the average energy consumption by week and, I mean weekday and per hour. So anyway, before we continue, I want to correct that this one is actually by weekday. So we will write first here, calculate average energy per weekday and hour. So what we will do is that we're going to have this one, TF. So this one will give us the average 
consumption of our appliances per weekday and this one will give us the average consumption per hour so we're going to calculate this one so let's execute this and there you go guys it's already executed and for us to really see what these values that we're talking about so we are going to have df so this can give us the average consumption per weekday and let's see what is in there let's execute this one so here for this particular time of the week then we have 110.896974 so this is the consumption what if we're going to expand these values so we could see more and we can make comparisons so let's have 10 okay so that would give us um five days i'm sorry at 10 days so we have this okay so for i mean 10 intervals time intervals that is per 10 minutes so we have here 110 six ten seven four and so on and so forth this is the average energy consumption during these times right so it's just 110.896 for all of these time intervals because again what we're doing here is that we are calculating the average values per weekday so it's just very logical that each of them will have the same value right so what if we will check per hour we will have this one so we have just copy pasted this and we're going to change this to hour and let's execute and of course we will still get a 10 values and let's execute this and let's see what we have here so as you could see it's because we now have here here by hour now our values are not the same it's because we have here by hour so for this hour from this point going to this point which is equivalent to an hour we have 158.8121 and for this one going to this one of course there will always be a continuation so f to make this one an hour so this is 187.426829 so this is the consumption per hour in average so this time what we'll do is that we're going to resample our data and that is we're going to set our data set in 30 minutes and one hour time interval so we actually call that one a resample and this is the kind of function in python that we are going to use to do that so we'll first write this one data sets in 30 minutes and one hour basis we are doing this because we are going to have this one as our basis for understanding and making boundaries of our categorical variables after this one so to set this kind of time interval what we will do is let's have this so this one will give us the one hour interval and again this is always in average and this one will also give us the 30 minute basis and this would return us the mean for each 30 minutes so let's execute this and there you go it is now executed and we are ready for our next step so remember this guys that we have this kind of assumption that our energy load would be higher if the consumption is higher and of course when the energy load is lower the consumption will always be low but then of course the question here is this how are we going to identify if the consumption is really low and the consumption is high so this part of our presentation of our project is very important because here we're going to set the boundaries for us to identify whether or not a certain time basis or a certain time interval has higher consumption or lower consumption so actually in this part it's always very important to have a meeting with your data science team because you need to have the wisdom coming from the domain experts so they can tell you what time interval would be the basis for for setting the boundaries 
for the lower and higher consumption. In the real scenario, what we are doing here is we are actually making the different tryouts and for each tryout, of course, you have to make discussions with your data science team so as to proceed to the next part of the project. But considering, for example, that we are done with our tryouts and we are done with our discussions with our data science team, now we have this code to execute so that we can complete our data science project. So let's continue. So we will write here first qualitative predictors because we are actually adding another features which are the low consumption and the high consumption and for us to do that we're going to use this code the hour basis we can say that we have a low consumption if it complies with this one so it must be in compliance with this threshold and for the high consumption per hour it must be in compliance with this threshold and of course for the low consumption for the 30 minute time interval then we have this kind of th threshold for the low consumption and for the high consumption we have this kind of threshold so once again guys identifying the threshold is the work that you have to ask help from a domain expert so let's execute this one and we let's have this okay now that is executed so for this part of our project, we have actually have done two important steps. First, we remove the additive assumption. Let me write here, remove the additive assumption, All right? And after removing the assumption or additive assumption, we have added qualitative features. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of data science courses for free, like machine learning algorithm essentials, the different data science algorithms, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science tips, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.